Okay, hey, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting for April 11th, 2023. The time is 5.30 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting, uh, both on Zoom and in the main meeting room here at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Chapter uh, 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. we got to fix that. Um, Please note that uh, while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly um, for purposes of in-person attendance. The town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Um, the remote participation can be found on the Town of Deerfield's website. There's a toll-free number to dial in if you'd like to speak, 833-548-0276. Uh, There's a meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. Um, on the Town of Deerfield website, you'll see the agenda for the meeting, a link to the agenda. You can click on the Zoom link there and, and attend by Zoom as well. So I'll call the meeting to order. Um, we have public comment first. Any comments? We don't have any public, so <laughs> I think we'll skip right over that. Um, so really, uh, uh, the, the idea for tonight's meeting was a continuance of a treehouse brewing application to amend their existing uh, farmer brewing permits. So we had held a hearing last week. It was last week about this and um, just wanted some time to read through all the stuff and um, and talk to council and see if we had any any items that we wanted to would um, recommend for uh, for the permit conditions on on the permits. So there was some back and forth, I think, between attorneys and, and uh, our office. And if I go, I think to the last page in our stuff we had our um requirements that um maybe i'll just read through these for the public that um that there must be a hard surface available for emerging vehicles to turn around south end of the building i think that was um that was agreed to correct i think there was a note about um a recommendation if it was more than a thousand people um, if 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 I may, do you, please. Would you like me to go through? Do you want to? Oh yeah. Review the review them all. Sure. Um, I don't know if you want to re read them into the record for the public. Or, yeah, I um, will. I will. There was the first was there was there was enough hard surface available for an emergency vehicle to turn around in the south end of the building, which yeah, I think there is. Correct? There is correct. So the area adjacent to uh, the exterior pizza oven yep. is has sufficient width and turning radius for emergency vehicles. So that will Perfect. be uh, unobstructed and, and ensure, will ensure that that's suitable for um, and available for emergency vehicles to run right. around. Uh, the box trailer has already moved, so we'll right. bring that up. Um, staff mm -hmm. members assigned to the fire watch detail attend the security meeting which was acceptable yeah. yep acceptable um and if the if the interior well, let's see so uh, tap room wasn't going to be open right or was it going to be just for yeah so i, I think the um if you want i can i can read the the yeah. initial recommendation and we can sure. talk about our our recommended changes so yep it says if the tap room uh, is open during performance there must be a staff member present to ensure that the guests do not exceed the tap room's capacity so i i think to just to be clear uh the tap room during a performance one of these larger outdoor events uh would be available for people who are attending the concert right so right. it provides additional areas for people to be served but there wouldn't be an overlap or, or separate occupancy in the tap room separate from the from the actual event right so um, so I just want to make that clear. That makes so, sense. So the tap room won't be open to the public during a larger event. However, it will be open to guest use, just like the toilet rooms will Correct. be available. And so to that end, uh, we just wanted, for the sake of, of clarity, to, to change the language from tap room to interior on-premises consumption areas, because yep. 
we don't want it to be perceived that only the uh the first floor is is accessible there might be folks on the second floor in the julius room sure or other areas so to the extent that there's on-premises consumption during an event we're still held to the exact same total number of occupants right um and we will ensure that there's staff present to make to 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 limit any um increase above the occupancy of that space okay so i think we're achieving the same purposes but i just wanted right. to Make that clear. It does. That makes sense. So th those are definitely, that's acceptable to us too. Uh, yep. And then I think one was just the clerical error of changing to South Deerfield. Yep. That's, that's acceptable. Yep. So with respect to the EAP must be, I think it's supposed to be revised to have all attendees shelter indoors in the event of a severe weather event. Mm -hmm. uh, Treehouse is working with the building commissioner to identify um that code compliance yeah um, i believe the building commissioner or building inspector correct me if i'm wrong ali requested some additional documentation from an architect to identify what the maximum capacity would be uh, or occupancy would be in the event of a um an event a severe weather event yep. so uh, okay. we're going I, I think we we can easily commit to continue to work with um, the town to provide any documentation needed to uh work towards providing um, space for folks in the event of an emergency or severe weather event yeah. to the extent that that's not physically possible from a code pers code perspective right. we would right. ask that the prior plan or the the kind of the, the fallback would be to the extent that folks have vehicles on site um, in the accessory parking lot and we can't fit them in the existing building because of some code compliance that they return to their vehicles while anyone who's parked off site would be able to come into the building. Yeah, that makes sense. Better of all options, right? You know, right. Our, we just, we just, we just don't want to have ourselves boxed in here. And then understood. we we hear that we can't accommodate people in the building and then we right. have to return to you folks. So yep. I think that the preference would be to allow for everyone to be in the building. We're willing to work with the town to to provide that documentation to establish that that's in compliance with applicable code. Yep. To the extent that that's not physically possible in you know, in discussions with the town, the backup would be that that alternative that I referenced yeah, before. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, ch chime in if anybody has a an objection uh, online to oh. any of the members. No. Okay. Um, so, uh, so the next one was the 5.30 p.m. security meeting. Reference on page two must include the police officer in charge. I yep, think that was that's fine. acceptable. Yep. Um, include duplicate language in the environmental partner partners document regarding pre-registration oh this is for the vip parking yeah was acceptable yep so people knew where to where yep. they were going to park ahead yep. of time that's acceptable great so uh the the next one related to um policy related to tailgating yeah as we mentioned at the previous meeting prohibited. we're prohibiting yep. tailgating that's fine. so i yep. think that's in everyone's best interest and yep. that Agreed. takes that off so we ask that that be struck and sure we'll, we'll insert no tailgating will be permitted in the parking lots prior yep. to an event that works um there was a question about security uh contractors not permitted to be armed that's correct They're, they don't have no any type taser, of no nothing like nothing. that okay no. that's fine we'll just leave that we, that we, that. we will rely on the deerfield police okay perfect um um, there's a there was a recommendation related to on the south lawn there must be two police officer details if the uh, occupants are 1000 to 1499 attendees and four police officers if there are 1499 to 1999 attendees that's acceptable to the applicant okay um, the next uh, condition or a recommended condition requirement provided that vehicles and parking lots must be checked for children and animals left inside unattended uh, as as we uh, mentioned in our our comments to these requirements, we're we're certainly going to have staff in the parking lot patrolling the parking lot, but right. Trias doesn't want to be uh, taking on that obligation to ensure the safety of. We we hope that our patrons are are safe and making good choices with their with their pets and obviously yeah. their their children. Yeah. Um. Uh. But uh, Trias is not in a position to take on the liability associated with checking people's vehicles for those yeah. items, for those. Okay. For for, for animals and, and children um so we asked that that be struck okay any thoughts on that guys i mean i, I think they would do an, they would do their best obviously to see but I, w I was just gonna say i think what we can do is whoever's in the parking lot just 
Look, I, I can understand why you don't want to be responsible for this because this is horrendous responsibility. Yeah. Uh, and an awful thing. But yeah. we still, from just from a public point of view, you know, public good, um, if you could just have your people be looking, um, brief them to look at the cars when they're right. walking through. Right. And, and we, as our police officers, do this anyway. So mm -hmm. the police officers that would be in the parking lot always, I mean, they're always conscious of this kind of stuff. But um, I just, you know, I just, checking just seems to be the best way. So yes, if we get you not in writing, but just have you do that. I, I mean, I just would feel better from a public, you we, know, from public health point of view. Yeah, we, we can certainly, we, we understand that. And mm -hmm. we, we agree that, uh, you know, every effort should be taken to right. a, a, avoid something so horrific as that. Yeah, um, we can certainly, uh, we could modify this to say that the EAP will include a recommendation that all staff in the parking lots use best use Practice. best efforts right. or reasonable efforts to uh, ensure that uh, that there aren't animals or children left in vehicles. That's prior perfect. To that. perfect. That'd be perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine by me. Yep. And I just wondered. Um, probably don't have this at any of your facilities, but would there be an opportunity for signage? I mean, you would think that adults going to a beer consumption spot would not be leaving their kids in the car. And the only time I've ever, I've seen children there, obviously, with their parents uh, in the tap room. But, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, I guess you wouldn't want to put a sign up that says we'll not be responsible for stolen umbrellas <laughs> and, you know, link that somehow to children. But I'm just wondering, is, has Treehouse ever come across this before? We pride ourselves on being a very kid-friendly establishment, um, right. even with it being a, a brewery, You're but um, to the extent that, you know, obviously if we saw something, we would say something. I think that signage would put that liability back towards us, right. but absolutely we would monitor along with the police. Okay. And I would encourage anybody attending one of our shows to yeah. keep an eye out for that and let somebody know. Yep. Yep. If you That's see good. something, say something. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the next was a, about temporary, easily removable. I didn't really follow this. What this was parking for some VIP parking. Yeah. Uh, or... So we, we evaluated with um, Treehouse's event manager, and this this is acceptable to to Treehouse in okay. that um, the idea being that there's going to be an evacuation route along. I think it's the railroad tracks. Yep. And so. Uh, in order to make sure that there's a clear path, they wanted to ensure that there's barricades to prevent people from from parking anywhere in that. I area. see what you mean. Yep, pulling in there and parking. A few VIPs can park there, but correct. Leave the spot open. I, I would maybe just modify this a little bit just to say, uh, well, I think we got to just change VIP just to VIP. Yeah, instead of VVIP. Yep, and uh, I would just say treehouse um, owners and management, maybe something yeah. along that line. So. Okay. Yep. Just looking at it right now. Just. Yep. That's fine. Okay. Clearer. Okay. Uh, the next is police details at one community place, entrance and exit. That's acceptable. Okay. Uh, police detail at entrance and exit of uh, Yankee Candle, uh, south entrance, not the traffic light. That's acceptable. Right. Um, traffic details were not considered to be safety personnel. That's understood. Right. Um, I had it and I just lost it. Hold on. There was, um, um, there was some, some, and so the next are kind of additional things that we were to consider. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, I think ultimately these are good reminders. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we can certainly as instead of going, I mean, we're happy to accept any requirements of the town is going to, um, uh, require in terms of, compliance, but Treehouse is is, seek, is intending and all of the participants, their vendors, their food vendors are going to uh, comply with all applicable requirements and regulations right. that the town and, yeah. uh, that, and state laws and regulations. So it seemed like some were redundant, like we were already going to do the, the yeah, we, you know, for anything tree, you do. Treehouse doesn't have the ability just to, to, right. not, to not comply with right. a health code requirement. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think these were more just, hey, as we're thinking Here's about an event, remember, let's, this let's is look what at this. Doing. So 
I think to the extent of acceptable to the select board, we can work with um, the respective departments mm -hmm. to ensure that all of these permits and uh, requirements are adhered to uh, within a reasonable period of time. Yeah. And uh, members, I, I had a question early on. What um, I didn't know, like, is the stage get set up and then taken down and That's then set up again? No, it gets set up once and it stays there for the season. So they would do an initial inspection on everything. And it's not like they have to come out and inspect every time. Um, so I wasn't clear on that because I was like, well, when when are they going to be able to inspect like right before the show or something? But it, it's a permanent. Or Correct. Well, it's semi permanent for the summer, for the yeah. summer. So, so that makes sense to me, then it's a lot easier to. So if I may, there's two more points that we would like to touch upon. OK, um, that one of which was provided in our comments, one which was not. First, um, with respect to these additional requirements, it seems as though they're geared towards larger events. Mm -hmm. um, we would ask just that they said that these are going to be adopted with respect to the, the amendment to the, the pouring permit, that they be qualified for a particular event of a certain size. Okay. So that way, it just we don't have to have a police detail for right. you know, a regular night on a Saturday night or sure. Friday night. So. Uh, no, that, that, and, that makes and, sense. And so I, I, I threw out a number, but I'm happy to have a discussion as to what the select board uh, yeah. used as reasonable. So currently, the, the pouring permit has 525. We don't have any of these requirements. Yeah. Uh, maybe we increase it to 600. I don't know. It, it's, it's whatever the select board feels comfortable with. But I just would ask that there be some qualification as to when these uh, requirements are, are added. Do you have thoughts on that, Carolyn or Tim? Um, I guess I would just, I would not even put a number on it. I would just say if you're having an outdoor event, because you have an occupancy limit in your building already. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm not concerned about what happens in the building. I would just say that, you know, these requirements happen if you're going to have an outside event um, with, you know, I, I yeah. I, I don't know if we want to put a number. It's kind of tricky because you almost want a number so that you're not like if they're having a small event that's outdoors and they're doing yeah. a big thing, right. we're not getting and all this. 200, 200 people yeah, or right, even exactly. 500 people. Yeah. Because it might be a situation where they have an outdoor concert. There's only 500 people. Right. They close down the tap room. It's the same kind of square it's, footage. It's kind of the same square footage. Yeah. It. So that, that's why I, 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 raise it as as a, as a thought and so you have a suggestion um what would you what would you want us to do because the intent we know what the intent is sure and, right. and we're not concerned that you're going to abuse it because we like i said we haven't had any complaints and you've you know been really really good as far as we're aware of the limit for serving and all that kind of stuff so i'm i'm truly not concerned yeah. but so why don't we, we have what, 285 spaces, mm -hmm. right, on the property? Right. If we say there's two people per vehicle. Right. That would be, if we were able to, from my perspective, if we were able to accommodate an event with all the parking on site, that right. would really be kind of the difference between yeah. a major event Where and, you've got, and, and you've got a regular on-premises right. event. That makes sense so, to me as well. Yeah, we could, we could say... Can we say um, 600? Yeah, that seems reasonable because then you're kind of starting to spill over into right. other areas. So, you're going to need traffic. And, and then use your best judgment. Even if, it, I think if you, you if you do an event and you realize like even with that small amount, it's better to have a police officer sure. out in the road, that kind of thing. It makes yeah. sense to us to see how that rolls. But I, I, think, um, that, I think that's reasonable. And yeah. we are in um, constant contact with the police department, yeah. just making sure uh, they monitor our event schedule. We are in contact yep. when we have something bigger coming up, right. even if it's you know not 1500 big, right. but if it's something that we think would be a benefit right definitely just just you know for even for your you know patrons to see that there's security and people are here and you know they feel safe and all absolutely that. yep for sure okay that's fine with me so that that was one the other um is our our favorite topic which is the uh the portable toilet rooms <laughs> okay uh and, and, and forgive me for having to uh bring this up bring again. this up again uh it does not <laughs> give me any pleasure to do so <laughs> However, but I, I, I do want to have a discussion about it sure. um, in that uh, uh, the status quo remains the same and, and that, you know, Trias is committed to seeing this as a progression and, and moving towards eventually the possibility of, of permanent toilet rooms. Yeah. Um, with respect to the uh, upcoming season, 
uh, Triage contacted the uh, supplier of the, the portable toilet rooms at the previous meeting. We expressly said that the toilet rooms would be the the porta bodies would be removed after each concert. Mm -hmm. It was determined that the cost to remove them and bring them back was pretty right. high, pretty exorbitant, and so. In the alternative, uh, because I know that that yeah. you know there's concerns about having toilet rooms um, on the property. First, I, I would note that they're going to be cleaned before every event and after every event. Right. So they would be clean toilet rooms. Separately, uh, Trias is willing to install some type of temporary scrim. 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 Yeah. Scrim is the term. So basically, a chain link fence that has a privacy well, mesh. Yeah. I don't yeah. Think it's not. It's not a permanent chain it's link. Like a, it's a. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like a. Uh, a, a very durable plastic and yes. triage can reapply it if, if for some reason it rips or what have you but that way um triage could have the porta potties on site they're they're buffered from visibility from the public um and so that actually is good during events as well right mm -hmm. from just a visibility right. standpoint but that would allow them to keep them on the property for mm -hmm. the the concert season as opposed mm -hmm. to having to have them removed and so Aside from just the cost, the yeah. environmental impact of having these big trucks come in and out. Um, it does make sense. Um, I, I think whatever you can do to kind of dress up that area, yes. even, you know, even if it was um, a green moss kind of on that fence or something that made it look attractive for your yeah. place too. And, and gave us some privacy and it didn't just look like, oh, there's the porta potty. You know, it was kind of a certainly some, some planting on a corner or something like that sure. would, would help. But, 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 <laughs> Carolyn, you're the one on this, so I'm, so, I'm sorry, Carolyn. Kid. My my deepest apologies. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that. I mean, we take them for the season for the kids, you know, for the sport events, and we don't bring them every game. They're just there for the season. But um, well, it, yeah. like I said, it it's much better. I'm I'm excited that you're going to put screening up because yeah. you know driving down five and ten and just seeing a row of porty potties is right. Yeah, not attractive, but um. Again, it's a sanitation thing. So as long as it's you make every effort to make it as sanit, you know, sanitized and clean and and hand washing available, anything like that is really important. Tim, Tim, you have a hand up. Yeah. So um, see, I'm the new student, so I raised my hand. <laughs> um, yeah. So when you say clean in other words they're going to empty what's been put into the uh, porta potties during the concert event and yep. it's going to be a clean there's not going to be you know right. like stuff hanging around for a week correct so so when i say clean they'll be serviced after each event and okay. then before, prior and, and, and prior so if you know there's a major rain event or something and there's you know dirt or something yeah. on the porta potties they'll be cleaned up as well yeah so presumably if they're serviced after the event uh, there shouldn't be any issues because they're also going to be locked up um, okay. after During the that. event. Yeah. So after their service, they'll be they'll be locked up. So you know, to the extent people are on, in the beer garden or uh, outside, they know to go in. Yeah. They're going to be going inside. They're not yeah. going to be using the porta potties on a regular basis right. as as um, an exterior uh, option. So okay, uh, there shouldn't be much cleaning at all that's required right. before the events. But you know, to the extent that there is, you know, rain events, what have you, yep. um, the uh, that 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 will be done as well. So that way, there will, there will always be a actual sanitized, clean toilet room, but also will continue to mm -hmm. look clean with fresh supplies. And yeah, fresh supplies. Things. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay, I just wanted to clarify what clean meant, and service yeah. is probably a better word. So, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. no, I, I appreciate I believe, the clarification. I believe in the uh, event plan, it is uh, listed as serviced before yes. and after. So. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, any anything else we want to go over? No, oh, I'm just, okay. Go, go ahead. ahead, Tim. I was Carolyn? just <laughs> I was just going to ask that um, you know. Sometime later in the, you know, summer, uh, towards the end of when your events, it would be lovely just to have uh, a, a debriefing on how, what problems you had, and if there's anything we can do to work with you to get better, um, sure. you know, that kind of thing. I, I just, you know, from more conversation is better. That's all. Yeah, agreed. agreed. We love it. And, and I think to that point, I think a, a de debrief later on is great. Yeah. But you know, constant communication is helpful too, right? right. So if you yeah. see something that's that that yeah. treehouse might not 
realize is an issue for, we'll for you folks, please let yeah. us know because we'll correct sure. it. So yeah. um, it's it's better to know right away as opposed to Wait halfway to the through the season. season or toward the yeah. end of the season and says, well, you know, you guys did this all, all summer. It's, right. it's better to know in advance. Sure. So. Yeah. And vice versa, if we can, Absolutely. we can do anything for you as well. I appreciate that. Um, right. Well, um, so then Tim, just, Tim, just a couple Tim. of things. So I wanted to check with you, Mark. Um, I, I sent a, I sent an edit, edited version to Chris Nolan, but I just wanted to see if you like in, in the first item under town suggested requirements, um, there was a missing in, in proximity. Yes. And then there was a missing T in front of the, and then there was a stake instead of stage. Yep. Yep. So, um, Chris can share that file with you and I, it has a bunch I'm a, I'm an editor nerd. I used to do this professionally, so <laughs> yep. I apologize for all these little details. Yeah. And then um, the Good only thing I wanted to bring up in the uh, suggested requir additional requirements, and I, I realize that you're going to hire hire um, food vendors who have a good proven track record, and we'll we'll already have dealt with them in licensing, et cetera. But I just wanted to. Um, I think the only thing that I ever heard that was remotely a problem was a food vendor didn't like the fact that somebody was trying to inspect them at the end of a concert event. And there was a little bit of a problem. And it could have been that they just had a mis misunderstanding, but the food vendors need to be very clear that if they don't allow inspections and um, if they fail any permit requirement during an inspection, they're gonna get shut down. And so it's good to hear from, from you and the town that that's the case. So if, if that isn't the case, if you could help us with that, that would be great. Oh, certainly. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of that, but and we'll also take it back to the, the staff there to figure out who that food vendor is and make sure that that is uh, communicated and that it's communicated to all other future food vendors. Thank you. Because I mean, food safety is paramount as well. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Makes a big difference. Yes. Um, so any if there's no other comments, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. I will make a motion to close the hearing, Carolyn. Thank you. And, and I will second that, Tim Hilchey. Great. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. And then um, I'll entertain a motion to approve um, it. Oh, right, if I may. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, just uh, sorry to interrupt. Nope. In terms of the prior discussion uh, at the last hearing about the hours, we had talked about. Yes. A modification of the hours. I don't know if town council had responded as to whether or not the brunch hours have been adopted yet or not. Oh, good question. I mean, we're and this is kind of separate, but yeah, we're. I think we were fine with that, but we you were waiting to find out um, what was that about, about the so on under, Sundays on Sundays, Massachusetts law, you, a town or city has to adopt the brunch hours. Uh huh. Which uh, is 10 a.m. and later on Sundays. If that's not, not a town meeting. That's a select board decision right uh it's a good question i i don't know the answer thoughts? to that i don't yeah. know who adopts that that'd be a question for attorney mead right uh, so it, so what I, we would ask is as you know kind of similar to uh our prior discussion kind of like a, a best case scenario worst case scenario similar to the building inspector right the the treehouse would uh, respectfully requests is it 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Yep. yeah and that's really, in the event that we were good yeah. in the, okay, that in the event that it's not you know right one yeah one supersedes the other yeah mm -hmm. yeah got it um that that's fine so um do you want to um anybody want to make a motion to or do you want me to make the motion and somebody second it um for the I hours i was just trying to see um i think champies champneys um in old deerfield offers the brunch so i think we've done it um gosh we, can, uh, why don't, we could approve it from 10 a.m to 11 p.m right yeah, let's yeah. let's just 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 in case let's just vote into mm -hmm. let's vote this so yep. let's vote the the hours after this mm -hmm. hearing yes. vote uh, okay so uh, um i would make a motion to approve the extended um treehouse application for the um farmer brewing permits of uh, that we just had our hearing on to um to incorporate the conditions that we have discussed here tonight um with the changes that will 
edit shortly and get back to you sure. um, with the 600, you know, yep. effect when there's 600 people and then um, the, the other minor changes. Exactly. The other minor changes. And, and then with respect to the suggested requirements, are, are, is the select board comfortable with just a general statement that Treehouse will comply with all applicable yes. state, local laws, or federal, state, local laws? regulations and we'll work uh with the town to ensure that compliance is achieved and permits are submitted in a timely fashion yes okay mm -hmm. are you all good with that yes yeah i mean it makes sense to me too because these are really all and then you will already have your permits and all of that anyway if send inspections so that's fine yep um can i have a second i will second that carolyn any further discussion all those in favor? Oh, wait, I'm hearing Tim, but you're muted. Um, I was coughing earlier. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I just, obviously this is time limited uh, by uh, if Treehouse comes back next year and wants to increase the, the uh, special event capacity yeah. even higher, then we would revisit the issue then. So correct. Uh, mm -hmm. doesn't need a, doesn't need an, a date that says this is good until 2026. So. This, this will just by way of clarification. So this would be a modification of the pouring permit on a, on a, the annual permit. Right. So uh, this will remain the status quo until we seek an amendment otherwise. Yep. Right. Sounds good. So that's it. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. And then I'll make a motion to um, approve the extended hours of operation provided that we have not already approved the uh, brunch hours uh, from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Sunday, I will, su Sundays and Saturday, Saturday. Sunday through Saturday. Sunday through Saturday. I will um, second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Ellen Ness, aye. Great. Thank you all very much. Thank you all for your time. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for your patience you on this. And tell us how things are going and and please come by. Yes. Yeah. And hopefully people can get some tickets now. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully the residents of Deerfield can get tickets. I swung I swung by and there were a few inquiries about Amy Mann. So Oh yes. <laughs> yes, there are. There are. So hopefully you can adjust a few. Um so Mark, before you leave, how soon will you announce on your website that uh you're gonna increase the capacity for Amy Mann? <laughs> We can I'm give a heads up to our town uh, tap room, and I'm going to find out from Mike McKenna, who is in charge of our events. Right, so, right. so uh, as, as soon as reasonably possible. <laughs> right. We'll post. All right. Thank so, you all. Thanks. Take care. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. So um, we had a couple other items. I mean, is there any select board announcements or board of health announcements anybody wanted to hit on? Chris, did you want to make any announcements on the 350th? No, not right now. Okay. okay. Thank you. So, um, oh, go ahead. I will do something quickly. Uh, I know Carolyn usually does Board of Health stuff, so, but I'm going to just say that even though our numbers are low and it's green out there, I'm living proof that COVID is still real and still with us. And uh, yes. so I would encourage everybody, if you're feeling sick and you don't know what you have, don't go to a public meeting. Right. Don't go to the office. Stay yep. home. Yep. Test. Find out if you're infected with something other than the flu before you um, engage in interaction with people you work with. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point. I've noticed uh, just just anecdotally talking to several people that I know recently, you being one of them, you know, COVID is still here and it's still happening, and 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 they're not feeling good. I mean, they're really getting sick from it. So uh, I feel entirely lucky that I have had a relatively mild case so far. <laughs> But right. I did lose my sense of taste, smell today. Oh, you did? Which means my sense of taste is not very great. Oh, good. You know how I great. enjoy grape products. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> grape products. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. Well, that's a good, good public service announcement for sure. Um, so uh, let's see. So we have for discussion items, we have an assistant treasurer collector position to hire. We have a recommendation. Chris, do you want to touch base on that a little bit? I would love to. So um, thank you. We had a very competitive pool of candidates. We did seven interviews this go round um, and we were really torn between a couple of them, but we did manage to make a decision. 
Um, and we have decided to recommend the hiring of Elizabeth Martinez for the assistant treasurer collector position. Um, Liz currently works as the accountant at the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts. She brings a lot of financial skills to the table. Uh, she's done a lot of work in the nonprofit sector, but a lot of her job duties would translate really well, we think, into the assistant treasurer collector position. Um, and she has a great personality that we felt would be able to provide great customer service and be a great fit for our organization. So we really recommend the board authorize the town administrator to continue with the hiring process for Elizabeth Martinez. That sounds I will, great. I will make that motion, Carolyn. Okay. So, um, I will second it as subject to the, I'm assuming that everyone read her, her, her resume and uh, her letter was very good. I thought her letter was a very good yes. letter, application letter. Yes, um, definitely. Yes. Um, and, and I want to thank the search committee and you, Chris and uh, Casey and Brenda and, and Sarah, all that have been working on this process to um, to get this position filled. Um, I'm excited that we're on our way to having full staff. Um, and it's it's been a hard road kind of doing all of that and, and managing your day to day work and doing this work, too. So I really appreciate all that you've done to uh, to make this happen. So um, I will. Um, so we have a we have a second. And we um, will take a vote. No other discussion. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn no, Ness, aye. I'm right. very happy that we have someone. Yes. Thank, thank you. you all. And I, I spoke to Chris earlier. He's going to reach out to the other applicants and thank them for their application. And um, we re really appreciate their interest in working for the town of Deerfield. So, and we have a town clerk to look for too. So, <laughs> see yeah. how that goes. Uh, so, okay, so that is completed. Um, we have a highway department surplus equipment transfer. So this is the old wood chipper. Um, and uh, Kevin had had worked out uh, a deal with Leverett for uh, um, eight, selling the surplus chipper for $8,000 to, to them. I think they were going to do um, a payment of 4000 and then after the, you know, July 1st, they'll pay another 4000 So I, I felt like that was a a good idea and a good move to um to put some money back in and um and and see that you know I think they're going to probably obviously do some repairs on it uh cuz that's why we we got rid of it so um I'll I'll make a motion to approve this um highway department surplus equipment transfer of the wood chipper to the town of Leverett for $8,000 I'll second that any further discussion all those in uh, favor? Yes, I actually would like to ask a question. So am sure. I correct that we spent ARPA money to buy this wood chipper? Yes, we did. Is there any consideration to putting the $8,000 back into the ARPA fund or? I'm, I'm good with that if that's possible. We can check with Brenda on that. Yeah, I'm that, not that sure if we can happen. I think that's a good idea too. Yeah, we could gear it towards, you know, something, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Great, great thought, Tim, for sure. Yeah, okay. The only the only other thing I had talked to Kevin about was um our liability for, you know, a less than safe wood chipper. But, um, you know, w when the transfer is done, yeah, it's not ours. Severed, it's as is. Yeah, and it's up to it's yeah, it's up to the other town to make it. You know, do do those repairs, whatever needs to be done to bring it up to speed. Just um, wanted to make sure it was yep. as. Is. Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so there were um, unanticipated items. There was the sewer, uh, Deerfield sewer operations bill. I think we're going to wait on that a little bit. Is that right, Tim and Chris? Just going to wait till another meeting here to talk about it. We're just waiting for clarification on language. I think. Yeah, I want. I definitely don't want any language to leave town hall until it's been checked three times. Yep, sounds good, Tim. I, I appreciate you good. looking over that and making sure it's right. Um, Berkshire design contract for the Leary lot. Are we good on that? I didn't get a chance to look at it yet, but I know that it's been going back and forth through the attorneys, right? Yes. So. Um... 
if the board wants to wait to vote on this until one of its meetings later in the week, that would be fine. I just wanted to put this on here because it yep. was sent to me. Um, and we are working diligently on the Leary Lot project. I actually, just to provide a quick update to the board, um, went to a site visit today with uh, Universal Electric, with Rivermore Energy, and with Eversource, as well as our uh, person from Berkshire Design. Oh, great. Um, and we met over at the site, kind of discussed logistics, uh, where we wanted the chargers to go, um, yep. what some of the components involved in placing them there would consist of, and made sure that everybody was on the same page before moving forward. And I think it was a really successful visit. Okay. That sounds um, fine. So, yeah, this was a contract because uh, Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design uh, wants to continue working with us yeah. on this project. Um, so that's where this comes from. I'm good moving forward if unless any, I mean, I'd like to just see it roll forward. I don't, yeah, I just had a question about the, the EV chargers. Um, mm -hmm. when, when this company ordinarily comes to a pre-existing parking lot and installs something and there's a, there's a match from the town, right? There is. Um, I know the finances have been discussed as coming from ARPA um, for the town in terms of the match. Um, it would be something that we would likely need to revisit because the estimates may have likely changed since those were first put out. Um, but ARPA has been the plan for the funding of that match. Yeah, right. no, I have no problem with that. I was just, um, I'm talking about, so so this company rolls into a town and it says it wants to put EV stations in and there's an existing parking lot and it wants to put them there. Um, we've got a, we've got a, a virgin parking lot that we're going to develop. So to my mind, it would be easier for them to install something in an undeveloped space than it would be. And if they're going to charge us extra because they're part of this project, I, I want to understand that before we go forward with it. Okay. Cause I, I, it, I probably have this wrong, but somewhere in the back of my mind, I remember hearing that this was going to raise the price dramatically. And I don't know if that was from Berkshire Design or if that was from the, the EV folks. Um, do you remember anything like that, Chris? I could be entirely wrong. So I don't remember anything about the price being raised dramatically. I do know that it is going to cost more for the project as a whole to have the EV chargers put in just because it's an additional component on top of the parking lot itself, but I don't know if they would specifically charge. I don't know if Rivermore or Universal Electric would charge more on the fact that the parking lot isn't fully developed, but I can definitely check about it. Yeah, it's probably not a, not a concern. The other um, the other question I had just in general about the Berkshire plot, mm -hmm. um, you shared with us some documents that, that need to be approved, need to be stamped and signed, and then they need to be approved by the planning board. And I wondered if the planning board um, could make approval subject to stamping and, and signing of the plan, um, because I would like to move this forward too, like Trevor. Have and we right. seen? Is there a if plan? If we could get somewhere? this done before the annual town meeting, it'd be one thing that we could say, "Hey, it, is there a plan somewhere?" Yeah, I mean, this is the site plan. Right. So it's, it's the uh, surveyor's plan. Is that correct, Chris? Uh, that's my understanding. Um, I can review and see if it's all set to be reviewed by the surveyor and stamped by the by them and gone onto the planning board. Um, I also want to see this done as soon as we possibly can. So, so it, that'll there, definitely is this a, uh, a, a, pl a plot plan laid out with parking spots and what it's going to look no, like? No, they don't. They don't oh, have okay. to approve that. This is just the the. As yeah. far as I understood. Joe Rotolo from MTC, who works for Lisa, said yeah. that although we got the survey to do the, the, the survey and say, okay, this is this is parcel A and this is parcel B, yeah. it hasn't been stamped and signed. Got it. And so his email today, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, said that that needed to occur. And then the planning board also has to agree that what the survey says is what the survey actually represents. Survey um, says... And so I'm hoping to set ding, a ding. deadline of like getting this done by, you know, next week. Um, yeah, I, on Wednesday of next week. I would hope that that's possible too. Um, seeing those additional requirements, it seems like just two additional steps that need to be taken. And yeah. I don't see any problems knock on wood with this, but um, okay. yeah, we will definitely be in touch about that in the very near future. 
when a when a like a a plan comes out, I really love to see what that looks like. Just kind of where park place would be, where parking would be, that kind of stuff. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah no, the, I mean, um, that's, Berkshire Design is actually going to come our parking lot. Oh good, good. This is yeah. just the site. This it's is just, just the physical land that yeah. it's going to occupy. That's fine. The skinny that's fine. road. Yep. And yep. The Leary lot itself. Right. Right. Okay. That's fine. Um, do you, do you want to prove this now then? I, I'm, I'm good with I'm, I'm good with it because I yeah. want to move forward. Yeah. So. Yeah. So okay, I'll and then we can probably schedule a a May a May discussion with the businesses too. You know. Yeah. So. Yes, because that yeah that's part of it too the outreach. So I think we can get right. that fully. Um, so uh, I'll make a motion to approve the um, the Berkshire Design Group's contract for um, engineering on the Leary lot of fifty four thousand ninety five dollars i will second that carolyn any further discussion all those in favor tim helchi aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn Moss, aye great thank you very much um okay so i think that's all we have tonight right anything else anybody want to hit on well i just want to update you um i had a mosquito district meeting yesterday and um the commissioners, which I am one of them, are wicked excited that the potential for um, housing the Pioneer Valley Mosquito District over in the 1888 building until we renovate it. And um, I thought I'm, that was not happening. Yeah, no, we it's fine with them. Uh, we just Kevin has to look up how much we charge that we spent for heating and electricity so that we can charge the mosquito district for that. I thought they were going to be here and why why I well what, what we're going to do is in that building. Well, that building's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, Trevor. <laughs> it, it it is bad. It is. It's bad, There's all kinds of stuff wrong with that building. Is I it know. better than a porta potty, Carolyn? Yes. Well, uh, listen, listen. Okay. It, once those last records, we had a conversation we were talking about in this building. Yeah, but we're going to use this, the town hall address because when we go to renovate that building, then we can do it, put him in the um, public health nurse office, shared nurse office. He's hardly going to be there. It's just we need a mailing address if we're going to hire senior, seasonal help and qualify for electrical vehicle program through the state. So it's critical we have an address you can't we can't work out of this home anymore I'm fine with an address i'm not fine putting him in that building though well trevor it's not bad and, oh, yes, it and it's a win-win listen in a million ways it's bad it's not it's listen he's Tim? not gonna hardly be there and i just want to say when those records are removed it becomes a vacant building and it was not a problem because we had curative PCR testing in there um, till December. Pete Thomas is in there doing the records all the time. So the building is being used. Once that building's cleared out, it becomes a vacant building. And that is huge expense from the town insurance and which we are not budgeting for. And this is a win-win for us because you know, the district will pay for the heating and the electrical. We just have to you know, uh, this needs to be vacuumed out. Come on, Trevor. Wipe I'm, not, I'm not 100 comfortable. Do you, uh, Tim, did you add a comment on this? No, I mean, I, I, um, I basically think this guy is going to be driving around our district a lot and working from home a lot. Yeah. And um, if there is an insurance component to this that's, you know, of concern, as long as it's a it's an address of accommodation address, I, you know, I. I don't want to be there. We're going to have our stuff there. We're going to have traps and stuff stored there. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Um, I'm not, I'm all right. We don't have to decide this tonight. So, no, no, don't worry about it, Trevor. No. Honestly, right. not bad. Anything else? <laughs> oh. Trevor, you're trying to get us done before 6 30. I don't know if that's allowed. Is this, yes. are, do we have a finance committee meeting tonight? Tomorrow night. I thought it was tonight too, but I guess it's tomorrow night. Oh shoot. Yep. Well, um no, we're not adding anything else. Motion to adjourn. 
Okay, I might be a little bit late for the finance committee meeting tomorrow. For tomorrow? Okay. Yeah, because I have a MAPCO meeting tomorrow at four thirty. So. Okay. I might be a little bit late. Yeah, I'm not sure what time the. Um... It's five thirty. If it's five thirty. It's usually five thirty. Yeah. Okay. I know right. uh, we were going to discuss um, capital tomorrow night, which would be, you know, figuring out what to do about the loader, about a truck, about the big truck. Oh, okay. You know, all of our, you know, ARPA money disappearing. So, and or do we want to use capital stabilization or other stabilization? You know, I mean, we have other money we can use, but I, um, I don't know. I just want to we should think about that and decide what we really need to get. I did uh, view the loader up at the uh, place on Saturday a little bit and understand all the problems with the one at the, at the transfer station. Um, more substantial than I thought, uh, but, you know, we could decide whether we'd want to quote for the repairs. Um, I mean, I think there's been numbers thrown around to fix it if we were going to hang on to it for another year. And I think it would need to be fixed if we were going to hang on to it because it doesn't go in reverse many times. I mean, doesn't go in forward many times and the hydraulic pistons are shot and the steering column is all over the place. So it, it is in need of major repair. And I don't know what that cost is. So I've been waffling on whether we should put this off a year but if we did we'd have to we'd have to budget a bunch of money to fix it yeah and um i'm sure that um leasing and a piece of equipment for the transfer station is not an option no probably isn't worth the but the what does they have a loader at the dpw yeah so the loader at the dpw does all the you know all the stuff and all the plowing and stuff like that moving the big piles of snow and then the one at the transfer station loads a lot of the brush into the old dump truck. So I think our old freight liner would then move to there and the freight liner we would surplus. Um, and that brings all the debris out back. And then it also cleans up the space with snow and whatever else. But I don't think it really goes on the road too much unless there's a major issue. So it's pretty much uh, around the around that place. So it's not it's not major work that it does each year i could be speaking way out of terms because kevin could get on and say no we use it through town for all kinds of other things but i think it's just there yeah um, yeah i don't know so we'll talk about it tomorrow i guess yeah i mean i do want to reiterate that i mean we, we've made a lot of project uh progress on a couple of projects that are the leary lot in particular they're supposed to be funded with arpa mm -hmm. and I'm not in favor of giving up ARPA money for two pieces of equipment that are, you know, that should have been budgeted for. I'm I'm sure Kevin's tried before. Yes. Yes. But, <clears throat> well, it's true. The town really needs to focus on funding capital, and they either need to borrow for it because we cut our budget so tight there isn't free cash anymore. Since I've been here, each year we figure out, oh, we've got some free cash. We buy a piece of equipment or two or do a small capital project, but that we've cut our budget so tight and we're, because we're also expanding services to the town with all the projects we're doing and we're budgeting so tight, there isn't free cash to do capital projects any longer. So we're either gonna have to decide to borrow for them or do a prop override, roll EMS in and and put money for, for other things, um, you know, for capital. So. It's a decision we have to make, but I am nervous too. I agree with you, Tim. It's tough to give up the ARPA money that was really focused on big projects that we had some control over to then, you know, spend it on capital that we should be funding anyways. Right. It's it's not a good way to spend one time, you know, no. use one time resources for regular that capital. should be budgeted for expenses. Right. And particularly with the finance committee chair talking about having to look at a, a prop over prop two and a half override question in the near future, yeah, um, which I'd like her to to flesh out. Um, I wouldn't. I would. That would even redouble my say. Let's wait a year and see if what we're going to do this. Yeah, because if we're going to create a budget 
structure that would allow for us to set aside stabilization money by doing an override, then it's logical right. to do the, the, the size override that will allow us to have 10 or 15 years of right. breathing room. Yep, I agree with that. All hey, right. Big topics, okay. okay. Uh, well, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Tim. Any I will questions? second that, Carolyn. Uh, <laughs> All those in favor? Camille, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye.